Hey, everybody. Welcome to episode 62 of the Miami Tech Pod. I am joined by uh, Maria, Chris, and Mike. We don't have Will or Caesar. They're both out vacationing and or traveling, jet setting around the world. But uh, we've got an exciting show today. We're going to be diving into the world of NFTs, the world of nightlife, Miami institutions. Our two guests today are Chris Adamo, local entrepreneur, investor, Pied Piper of Miami, uh, member of the JPEG guest. Morgan crew, returning guest. And then we've also got Mike Simpkins, local uh, real estate developer, philanthropist, partner at 11. And uh, we got an exciting show today, guys. Thank you guys so much for coming on. Chris, thanks for coming back. And Mike, welcome for the first time to the Miami Tech Pod. Thank you so much. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, Maria, for having having me. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> our pleasure. Our, our pleasure. So I'm really excited about this project. Um, but before we get started, why don't you guys give uh, the, the listeners and viewers a little bit of background on sort of who you guys are in case someone's been under a rock and hasn't been following any of the Miami Tech uh, explosion in the last year? Uh, all right. So I'll start it off. I'm born and raised in Miami. And I, as you mentioned, um, I'm a real estate developer investor, uh, focusing on uh, substantially in the downtown area of Miami, Park West, Overtown, Alapada. Um, and I've been doing that for about the past 12 years. Um, one of the properties I bought was at 29 Northeast 11th Street, which is the location of 11. And uh, instead of leasing the property, we partnered on the property uh, and opened 11 in 2014 and quickly became a very successful nightclub. It's the highest grossing nightclub in the world per square foot. And we, besides having a lot of success around the nightclub, we started selling millions of dollars of hats a year. Got me and my partners, Dennis Sigori, Mark Roberts, thinking that we had more than a nightclub and we expanded other verticals. We now have a vodka, we have audio equipment with a partnership with DOS Audio. We're developing a hotel and condominium tower, two different hotel and condominium towers uh, that sold out. Um, 65 stories, 850 units, and uh, generally um, have been a big um, advocate of tech in Miami, bringing higher paying jobs here, and uh, really excited to see what's been happening the past couple of years, but it's really been a 10 year build up to this point. Um, so happy to talk about uh, my perspective on that too. Yes, I have to mention, uh, Michael has been an incredible supporter and donor of Refresh Miami. Yeah. Michael has been uh, on the board of Endeavor and a big donor there and uh, actually leases a space to a space called Tribe, which is now Center for Black Innovation. So has been really, really involved and a huge supporter of the Miami Tech ecosystem for 10 years plus. So thank you for all the work you've done. No, thank you. And actually, with, in the real estate, um, we own a lot of property in Park West. And when the Brookings Institute report came out about innovation districts, we master plan this four block area in downtown Miami as an innovation district. And that really got me um, thinking a lot about it. Uh, when Amazon was looking for HQ2, if they would have come to Miami, they would have come to that area over there. Um, so kind of that, you know, the real estate brought me into thinking about it. And then once you care about it and you work with great people and you see such amazing stakeholders doing so much for the cause, you know, I, uh, I was happy to do uh, a small part um, in kind of where we are today. Very, very, very small part. No, it, no. it had a much bigger impact than you're making it seem, but we'll, we'll let it die there. No. <laughs> um, and Chris, I know we've had you on in other capacities, uh, Flamingo Capital, a letterhead, where by us, but kind of, Share a little bit about what your work is in kind of the capacity of Eleven. Yeah, so I came out with Michael a few months ago to help him out with building out this project. And uh, we have very big dreams for this project. Um, so I'm helping out with, you know, growing our first early members of the community. 
and it's been great to kind of see people come together from all walks of life. They have an amazing ecosystem of people, you know, very deep in the entertainment world. So every person who's played there before is in the mix in some manner. Uh, folks who have, you know, been involved in, in the projects for years have, are being in the mix as well. And uh, it's just an amazing group of thousand people that we're going to have together, building together. So our grand vision here is to become the back end for all nightlife, I think, in, in the Web3 world, which I think is not being done anywhere else and showing them an example of how to do it right. Um, there's not many great membership programs out there um, for, for venues that I've seen actually work. Um, and this is more of a universal membership, I think, for the whole 11 world, as, they, as Mike said, growing out into like real estate projects, new clubs, and then expansion into the metaverse one day. Um, they were smart enough to get involved in crypto and, and NFTs a long, a long time ago, in NFT world a long time ago, you know, earlier last year. Um, they have the 11.8, which is a great, smart idea, and they've been building around this brand. Um, so you see all the merch, uh, and as Mike said, the merch is amazing. Uh, they sell millions of dollars of hats a year, uh, and I expect that number to grow from this project because we're getting real creative about how we use that IP. And for me, it's like I love finding new ideas in different industries. I have a very, very wide array of like people I work with, and it's for a very good measure. I want to know all parts of every kind of industry and how it grows and how to use technology for the for those places to actually thrive. And I think this is a great example of taking NFT technology and Web3 technology for a very old school way of doing things with in real life venues. Just those things have never been put together before in a very good way. So what Mike's doing and the team there is really cool to see. And I'm pumped to help him build it. Yeah, and, and just to add to that, you know, Eleven was the first nightclub to accept uh, cryptocurrency. Our condo development was the first pre-construction project in the country to accept crypto with a partnership with FTX. And uh, as Chris said, we own Board Ape number 11 and my partners and I all crypto NFT enthusiasts. So we've been at this for a while and it's kind of been seeing the evolution of NFTs go from collectible PFP collections into access membership community that really got us thinking that it was an avenue for us to jump into um, and in doing so, we were very thoughtful about it. We partner with Horizon Labs, who worked with Yugo and ApeCoin and their metaverse. We brought in great uh, Web3 partners like Chris and Greg Norman Jr. and Swan's helping us. And we have a, a ton of my partners that are in hospitality and business people um, all working on this project and really um, being very thoughtful not only about the tokenomics, what it will look like, but really the execution of the utility and the community after the mint um, that we're so excited about and really have a very long-term vision towards. Yeah, I mean, we're here at, say at VCon, we're backstage here, you know, folks who run projects because we think that most anti parties are not great. So uh, thinking about one day 11 on the road, like we're looking at how to help people like build their communities and make them more fun. So that's kind of a thing that I think can be huge. What really interests me about this is like there, there's been memberships in some shape or form at clubs, you know, country clubs, private clubs, whatever, for all time, right? That's been, uh, but the fact that you guys are sort of bridging the gap between this digital world and the physical world is really interesting. I'm curious, what do you guys see like long term as some of the additional things on the roadmap and all that for uh, Captain's Club? Yeah. And, and Brian, what I would say is from my perspective, the traditional membership model for an existing business is much less risky. Um, you have annual dues. You could change the terms at any point. You could cancel your membership program. You know, people don't have an expectation that they are going to get any sort of value um, monetarily for for that membership. And it's really the safer course to go for an existing brand that has a equity. Um, but we've never taken the safe course uh, as entrepreneurs and as business people. We really like challenges and being the first and doing things differently. And we see using NFTs as a membership model as a much bigger long-term opportunity than the traditional membership and a way really to connect much closer, more intimately with our community um, where, you know, they, they, our customers become our stakeholders and, and part of a, 
uh, this. And, and we understand that this obligation is like having children. I mean, we now, these people who mint, people who buy on open seas, we're with them forever. So just like your kids, when they mess up, you can't just get rid of them. Uh, you know, so we're really committed to this. Um, it's been a year in the making, I would say, this NFT project since we uh, first started thinking about it. And, um, you know, so excited for Monday uh, to kick off, build that community. And that's just the start of hopefully decades for 11 Crypto. So you mentioned Monday. This episode is airing on Monday. So today will be the day, if you're listening to this, um, where folks are able only from the kind of whitelist to mint, correct? Yeah. So we're doing a, I'll let Chris talk. He's, he's uh, membership and handling that. This, this. Yeah. Monday is our captain's list. Uh, it's like early supporters of the brand who are minting on Monday. And then Tuesday is the allow list, um, which is a broader list from the folks who have been finding us you know, across the years of becoming you know, coming to the club and just interested in broadly. And then Wednesday is the public mint. Um, we hope there'll be a couple left in the public mint. Um, we can't guarantee it, but we're hoping that there'll be a couple left uh, so folks can get that there. And then, you know, we can turn to OpenSea. Um, we, we're going to, you know, I mean, I think the value on this membership is, is amazing. The price may seem like it's high, but when you think it's a lifetime membership for all these perks, I don't know how you can get something better than that um, at this point. Um, and we have grand plans for this group of people. Like we're going to be throwing really amazing gatherings for these folks intimately, you know, around the world, at the club. Uh, and then the value behind the, the network itself, the alpha network here is, is huge. Like these are people I've been like looking up to for years. I'm now talking to you like, hey, you're going to you know, be a part of this community. And they're super excited to be part of it. So like and the access to people is going to be pretty cool um throughout the years that we have this going uh and then the expansion for the 11 brand is just like you know the things i've been talking to with mike and the team about is just like you know there's there's a lot of room to grow in, in, in the world around us yeah we're really excited i mean when we first started thinking about this we were planning to do a larger community doing 10,000 nfts and it was overwhelming in a lot of regards thinking about offering the level of hospitality, the utility, the connection with that many people starting uh, from, from you know, the ground floor. When we rethought the tokenomics and came up with the smaller community of 1,111, it really felt so right for this particular project because it's our in real life customers that we're onboarding into Web3 that are really passionate and exciting. It's Web3 um, native people who may or may not be existing customers at 11 that are passionate about uh, this project also. And we also have a lot of uh, celebrities and business titans coming in there. Um, so I think with this size group, we'll be able to deliver the utility that we really uh, need to, to our community. Why don't you guys share with us a little bit about like what are some of the um, utilities that a Captain's Club member gets? Uh, and, uh, we like we talked about it, but we didn't like sort of dive into that. You know, and so uh, so let's why don't you guys share that? All right. So there is a wide range of utility. Uh, the first that most people seem um, most interested at the first is there will be a captain's line. So typical Friday, Saturday night. Um, before I go there, I'll just give a 11 nightclub is, um, was open in 2014. It's, um, you know, kind of become a very popular place for those listeners. I know a lot of your listeners are in Miami, so they probably know 11, don't need kind of the overview. But for those who don't know it, it's really more than a nightclub. It's become part of pop culture in Miami um, and is a very popular place. Drake performs there. Travis Scott, Tiesto, there's Cirque du Soleil shows going on. There's beautiful people there. There's uh, every, every walk of life. And um, people seem to have a, a good time. And we treat everyone like a VIP. We don't even use the term VIP because everyone's a VIP that goes to 11. And as a result, it's become very popular. So on a typical Friday or Saturday night, there's a two to three hour line to get into 11. Well, with this NFT, you are a member of the 11 ecosystem. So what that will provide 
um, at the club is a captain's line. Think of it as a TSA line to the normal one. It will be a smaller queue conceivably, and you'll be able to go and get expedited entry uh, for you and some of your friends into the club. Um, we will also have a exclusive parties that are only for captain's members. And our first one is happening on Thursday, three days time um, in Las Vegas at Resorts World. We're having our initial captain's club exclusive party. We're doing a takeover of Resorts World Vegas. And this one's a party within a party. You'll be in the VIP section uh, with tables, bottles. So if you're in Vegas and you're a captain's member, come on out to that. We're also, as Chris mentioned, uh, creating an alpha group. Uh, we have a Discord now. We are planning on um, e using Discord and or Telegram uh, for our community to communicate in this alpha group. In addition, Captain Club member will be, have a mint pass to anything 11 Crypto does in the future. And as Chris alluded to, we are planning on really bringing in um, talented people to help with developing uh, Web3 applications. And we're, 11 Crypto is becoming a complete Web3 company um, that, that we are super excited about being able to implement a lot of our utility and other things. So that is just a uh, sample of our utility um, that we're gonna offer Captain Club members. I, I mean, I think this is super interesting, super exciting. And as a Captain's Club member, once the mint happens, uh, I'm looking forward to the, the using this in person uh, here in Miami. But I'm really curious also, like, like how hard was it to do all these integrations for the like operating system of the, the club, right? Because it's one thing to say, like, we have this NFT. It's another thing to actually, like, make it work with the physical uh, aspects of the, of the club. It's really hard. It actually is a um, very challenging component, especially with a successful business, as I mentioned. There's a lot of risk associated with it. Um, we've been working with Greg Norman Jr.'s company, Europa Labs, for token-gated access, physical redeemable uh, tokens that will be airdropped, different things for the community. Um, I would expect as a captain that it's not going to be seamless. We are going to try our hardest and do our best. But this is really kind of technology that is now evolving so quickly. That's going to be super easy in a couple of years. But right now, it's just coming out. Um, so we are going to offer this utility. We're going to do our best. But if it's a little bumpy in the beginning for our captains, Holders, uh, stick with us. We're going to get it uh, sor sorted out. But uh, we do have a plan, but I anticipate some bumps. I have a feeling people will give you a lot of leeway. Don't worry. <laughs> um, so I think, Chris, you alluded to this earlier, kind of long, even longer term or just kind of bigger picture of how do you bring a lot more of these experiences from traditional in-person venues kind of into the the web two to into the web three world and so you guys are thinking a little bit through that can you kind of elaborate a bit on that yeah i mean a lot of the communities don't really have a lot of stuff in person um and, and right being at vcon this weekend it's like it's so essential to do these type of gatherings this is obviously a much larger one maybe one day we'll have 11 con who knows uh <laughs> but that would be an experience i'd imagine uh but it's so important to have things that are smaller and they feel like they're like put together where it's like very very intentional um, and I hope that's what we, we build around that, you know, as we do things in the club and maybe outside of the club. Again, this is the community's part. It's like, can you tell us what you want to see more of? You know, what are your ideas? And like, when folks start to engage in this smaller group of like, you know, people, they tell us, hey, how about this? How about that? And then they can build around that. You know, it should be more of like an inclusive, like, you know, ideation of things. So, you know, that's what a lot of these groups do do really well. It's like people's voices are heard and then take action on things and they're built. Um, and that would be great for us to kind of see more of people's input. Yeah, we're really excited. I mean, we are 11 at its core initially. 11 is now a lifestyle brand, but 11 Miami is a hospitality company. I mean, we throw parties. Um, you know, right now it's four nights a week. We're, we're typically 24 
hours, 365 days a year. We're still ramping back up. So we're four days uh, open very late. But in terms of throwing parties, uh, having people have amazing in real life experiences, that's what we do. So that is the easy component um, of the equation for us. Well, I'm really curious also what you guys, are, what your thoughts are on how big NFTs have gotten in Miami in general beyond just 11, you know, like it feels like, and I, obviously I'm in a bubble, right? Because, you know, we're all part of the firm and we all talk about this on WhatsApp all day and things like that. But it does feel like NFTs are, and crypto has just sort of taken Miami by storm, you know, in the last 12 months. Totally. I mean, do you guys and agree? We're all pretty new, right? I mean, all of us are only a year in, Brian. We started the, the JPEG chat. It was like 10 of us in there, just like, what's an NFT? And that was like 16 months ago, right? So like, you know, it's very, very early still uh, when you put in those terminology and, and, and that timeline. Um, but it feels like everyone now is very NFT curious. That's what I would, just, I, would I would say that's a good term to kind of go with. And, and we personally, Mike and I, have been onboarding hundreds of people for this NFT. We had an amazing onboarding team basically doing live streams all day for a month. And this is pretty happening all day. Like three people on, on there just live training people how to make their wallet and like how to buy their crypto and how to buy the NFT. And think about that kind of like undertaking. Like percentage wise, Mike, probably we're going to have the most amount of new people buying an NFT other than VFriends, which is yeah. kind of our inspiration. No, I would say, yeah, it's amazing to see in Miami so many crypto entrepreneurs, VCs, investors, NFT moving here. They're great customers at 11. They're, you know, uh, supporting all hospitality, real estate. So amazing, amazing stuff. But doing this project, you realize that it's not as widespread as we sometimes feel uh, as NFT collectors. As we're onboarding people, a lot of them are still asking, what is an NFT? Um, and you know, probably 75% of our community, this will be their first NFT that they ever purchased. Um, so which we feel really good about that we're onboarding these people in the web three, because there's no doubt in the future, everyone will own NFTs. Um, there were options we explored that could have centralized some of the function and it made it much easier to onboard. But we didn't want to do that. We wanted to enter the space authentically, respectfully. We wanted people to have to uh, download MetaMask, get Ethereum, you know, mint, as opposed to um, transacting with a credit card and keeping it in some centralized location. Not that there's anything wrong with that if a team feels that that's the best course of action. We just decided that we really wanted to, to enter it authentically and onboard people in a way that they were ready to continue on the Web3 journey. One of the things you, you guys touched also on like Eleven being sort of participating in the metaverse and stuff like that, you know, and uh, I know the metaverse has so many different definitions and everyone has their own version of what it is and all that stuff, you know, but like from a sort of like 3D environment, second life type thing, which is sort of being popularized here and there, uh, do you guys envision there being like a virtual version of 11 in the metaverse where people can go and party online? Yeah, what I would say, Brian, before that is 11 currently has one of the most unique, interesting, and amazing metaverse experiences. At our hotel and residences, we have a metaverse experience where you put on Oculus goggles, you're in a large room in our sales center, and you could see the hotel and condominium. You could go to the spa. You can go to the day club. You can walk through your unit and you're not, you're not clicking buttons to navigate you. You are physically walking around and seeing it. You go in the pool and you go underwater and it looks like you're underwater. Um, so we are incorporating that component into our condominium sales strategy. Um, and it's been really something that's been successful in terms of getting people to understand the product that's going to come. And you guys should check it out because it's actually very cool to see and something that is quite unique and probably the most advanced um, virtual reality for a condo development in the country. Um, but in regards to your specific question, we are really excited about the prospect of 11 nightclub uh, in the metaverse. Um, we 
as our uh, w- the land we claimed in, in the other side with our board ape is actually directly next to the board ape palace. We're kind of in the inner circle. So that's a really exciting project to think about. We also are believers that um, hospitality companies could be in multiple metaverses, just like you could have a 11 in Vegas, New York, Miami. There can be an 11 in Decentraland, Sandbox, other side, and maybe even our own one day. So we are contemplating all the possibilities, um, talking to people that are smarter than us and working with great people. And, uh, you know, the sky's the limit. That actually loses something I was going to ask is, uh, do you foresee opening up a physical 11 in other cities? And I think I'm against it because I feel like it should just stay in Miami. Like I want it to be very unique to Miami, but I, I get the business uh, potential in other cities. So any yeah, thoughts on that? We've kept it just in Miami. Uh, it's It's been almost eight and a half years since we opened 11 Miami. Time flies. It goes quick. But I would say that there will almost certainly be other 11 nightclubs in other cities. I mean, the natural is Las Vegas. That that kind of uh, seems like um, would do very well and kind of benefit that that city. And uh, uh, But we're looking at other opportunities. And the 11 hotels, we think, will be in a lot of other cities as well. We're opening this amazing hotel, Deepak Chopra, four restaurants, big day clubs, sports bar, um, lounges, uh, really be sensational. So we are um, expanding the 11 ecosystem, which is a very good thing for 11 Captain Club holders, because not only is this access to 11 Miami, this is access to the 11 ecosystem. So as we grow this access pass, um, benefits grow along with it. That's amazing. Uh, I know that we don't want to keep you guys too long. We have, I know you guys are at VCon. Um, so I think we want to kind of wrap everything up and so let you guys get back. But last point to plug, how can people follow along? How can people, hopefully if they haven't gotten in, in the Monday, Tuesday releases, uh, how can they mint on Wednesday? Uh, yeah. Share all the, the links and, and info. Yep. 11 Captain's Club on Twitter and Instagram, and that's our website, 11captainsclub.io. Um, public Mint will start at 11 a.m. on Wednesday. So Yeah, and uh, we have a Discord. Discord. And join our Discord as well. And Discord. Sorry, yes, and our Discord. It's 11 Captain's Club. You'll find it on Discord pretty fast. Um, and uh, hop in. You can DM us. Find us on Instagram or Twitter. Me and Mike are very accessible. And I, and I just want to say before, it's – this pod is, is amazing, but it's incredible what you both have been doing for the Miami tech ecosystem. Brian, since the very beginning, uh, plugging away. And Maria, not too long after, kind of coming on and, and, and pushing the agenda for Miami as a uh, major global city with great opportunities for employment and people to founders and, and entrepreneurship. So thank you guys so much for your contributions to my hometown, Miami. Oh, our pleasure, man. This Love is, you guys. We're, we're all native Miamians here, and this is part of like turning Miami into the city we want our kids to thrive in, you know? Um, and I, again, I appreciate everything you guys are doing too. Um, Chris, Mike, thank you so much for joining us today. Have fun at VCon. Make some new friends, uh, you know. Bring them back ones to Miami. Or yeah, recruit more people back you know, here. Recruit them back to Miami. You know, so... <laughs> Um, and and we're going to look forward, forward to, to, yeah, some Captain Club parties. We'll both be minting next week. Absolutely. Love to hear that. So excited.